I'd like to welcome UNL student Garth Gritzman to speak on designing inspiration.
was put on in conjunction with the College of Architecture. What we wanted to do is educate the public about the positive, positive impact of environmentally responsible design decisions. As architects and designers, we always have to be critical of our decisions. Why? Because our decisions affect the environment, they affect people, and they're really important in the overall scheme. So for Parking Day, we focused on five main ideas. These ideas were established by Rebar, the originators of Parking Day. The first one, creativity. As designers, we are always looking to, uh, to innovate, to create new things. We wanted to show people the, the importance of design in creativity, the importance of design in, in making new things. Secondly, we wa wanted to involve the city of Lincoln. We wanted people to see to understand and to experience um, the potential of uh, reinventing parking spaces. Third, we want our people to think critically about, about urban land use, about sustainability, and about recycling. Next, unscripted social interactions. We really didn't know what to expect when we decided to invade parking spots in downtown Lincoln. We didn't know if people would be mad because we're taking in their parking spots or really what reaction you would get. Lastly, we, did, we wanted to have some fun. We wanted to show people that reinventing a parking spot as something new didn't have to be negative. It could be a lot of fun, it can involve people. So on May 4th, 2012, we started Parking Day. Um, this was funded by the Fulbright Canada Eco Leadership Program as well as the College for Architecture, part of UNL. So what we did was a design charrette. What we did was there were, uh, we had 24 hours to come up with a design concept. And this design concept was then submitted to uh, a group of faculty who decided um, who would get funding from the Fulbright Canada program. And this funding would be used to create a parking installation that would go downtown. So our, we submitted these designs, and five were selected to receive funding. And now I'm going to show you a few images from uh, the event itself. This was one of the first installations that, that was there. Obviously, it's a car covered in inside, and it was absolutely priceless watching this car try to drive down the street. <laughs> really interesting. Secondly, this was a kind of an interactive game, so to speak, that. We really wanted to involve the citizens in, in uh, having fun and playing and really reinventing the parking spot itself. This one provided kind of a seating area for people to come and take a little break from the, from the fast speed of urban life. You can see uh, one person decided to take a nap downtown. I don't know how he's sleeping, but I guess it's possible. This one is just a foosball table. It's a pretty simple installation, but it's effective at the same time. So these installations all were successful at communicating this idea of reinventing a parking space or reinventing urban, uh, urban conditions. Now, the reason I'm here today is because uh, I designed one of these installations myself. And so I'm going to go into detail about how uh, we built this installation and how it's affected Lincoln and how it's affected the world. And I think it's really interesting to see the process by which we made this installation. So I was inspired by this number, 29 billion. It's the number of bottles that the US consumes each year. I find that absolutely staggering. What's even great, greater is that only 28% of these bottles were recycled in 2009. I think we can do a lot better. What I want to do is to tell people and to show people and inspire people that we can recycle more than this. So the design charrette provided this opportunity for me to explore this idea and to think how can I recreate and inspire people to recycle more. So my idea was to hang hundreds and thousands of bottles from a roof canopy to create this little park space as you'll, you'll see later in these pictures. Now, I titled my project Pop Culture. Why? Because I think that it's up to our generation 
to think critically about recycling, about sustainability. I think it's up to our generation to increase that number of 28% of recycled bottles. So, for this charrette, this was my design concept. I wanted people to be able to interact with this, with this installation. I wanted to provide shade. I wanted to make a small park within the confines of a parking space. So this drawing was generated using software we use in architecture school. Uh, it's called a Rhino. Um, and so this surface represents a bunch of bottles being hung from a string that's supported on top of a, uh, by a structure. So this surface that we generated um, then uh, helped us to inform the fabrication process. So from this surface, we used a scripting program that uh, output a set of data that um, provided us uh, really the numbers by which we had to create this project. So as you can see here, this was the data output from that scripting program. And so when I first saw this, I realized what I got myself into. <laughs> And I realized immediately that I could not do this by myself. So thankfully, I had the support of many of my friends who really thought I was crazy for even attempting this. And I might have been a little bit. But they came and they, they helped and they saw my idea and they saw my passion in design and they, they followed through. Um, and at times I think they they absorbed this passion for me in designing this. So the first step was collecting bottles. We decided that to fit the parking confines, we needed 1,581 bottles. So how do you collect that many bottles? Well, fortunately we partnered with UNL Recycling and they helped us collect these bottles from campus. So I carried truckload after truckload of these bottles back to my studio in uh, the architecture building on campus. And we slowly began to accumulate these bottles, hundreds and hundreds of bottles. And when I saw this pile of bottles of 1,581, I really, really understood how much time this is going to take to create what I wanted to create. So what we did is we set up these stations my friends to come and help volunteer for however many hours they could during the, during the school week um, and to help cut string because we had 1,581 individual pieces of string that had to be cut and tied and labeled. This process took, I guess, over 100 hours to do total. So really, as boring as the process was, people began to have a lot of fun with it. A lot of people came, we played loud music, and we cut string for hours. Perfect way to spend a Friday evening, if you ask me. Next step in the process was taking all the caps off of the bottles and drilling a hole in them. This actually took quite a few hours as well. Now, as with any remodel or with any architectural project, things get messy. All right, so if you have 1,500 bottles, and you're taking the labels off of each one of these bottles, it really turns into a mess. And this is how we, uh, this is how I lived for quite a while in this mess. But it was exciting at the same time, because things were happening. People were getting excited about this thing coming to fruition. So our next step in the process was building this frame from which we would hang all 1,581 bottles. And so this frame was built using 2 by 6s with string strung in between these into a, into a woven pattern. And what was really cool is we, we borrowed a longboard from someone and we just rolled underneath this thing and wove it. It actually worked pretty well. So after this step, we took all of those 1,581 pieces of string that we had cut and we glued them to this frame and to this Grid. At this point, you really began to see this form taking shape. This is a really exciting part. You can see that each string had a different length. And so as it was being glued on there, you can start to see the form taking shape. So we took this project and we brought it outside 
This was the day before our uh, parking day occurred. And for about 10 hours, there were between 6 and 10 people working, hanging 1,581 bottles off of this, off of this canopy. Now, we also filled each one of these bottles with a small amount of liquid. We did this so we could create this brilliant canopy, this stained glass effect, if you will, um, as you looked through these bottles from below. So, we used six different colors in this design, and each color was based upon the elevation of the bottle itself. So you can really start to see this form taking shape, and it was, it was a blast seeing this thing come together. So, and, and you can also see the labeling system we used uh, to uh, put the right color bottle in the right spot. So it's really a complex system, but um, we had a great time. That evening we started putting this thing up on its uh, up on the columns. You can see we we didn't have any kind of crane or anything like that, and it's hard to believe, but this thing weighed several hundred pounds um, just from the small half ounce of water we put in every single bottle. So this was a this was a very nerve wracking part. I was convinced this thing was just going to fall into pieces, and our hundreds of hours of work was going to be wasted. That morning, this is absolutely incredible, is that I got nine of my friends at five in the morning. Now think about this, college students get, getting up at five in the morning. I think that was, that was exciting. So we moved this thing downtown through the middle of the street into its final resting place downtown. So that morning, May 4th, 2012, the sun rose and revealed this beautiful uh, canopy. We had 1,500 bottles. So as you can see, the liquid in the bottles formed this kind of flower-like pattern on the bottom of each bottle, and it was really, uh, really an inspiring and a beautiful piece of work. So you can see we moved this to several different locations throughout the day, um, and what was really exciting is the conversations that I got to have with uh, random strangers walking, uh, getting their morning coffee, and stopping to see what the heck this thing was. And so these conversations, they, they, they range from like, you know, what is this thing? Or what are you trying to talk about? Um, what message are you saying? And it was really a perfect opportunity to share our ideas about parking day, about urban land use allocation. So again, you can see these, this flower pattern kind of created with the bottles. Now this is looking from the top down. I just thought this was a really compelling image. And you can really see the, the uniqueness of this project. So once again, we encourage people to come underneath this and experience it at eye level. Because that's, I think, where the most uh, fulfillment is found, the most inspiration can be had. So I encourage people to, to lay down and look straight up at this installation. People were really excited about it. They thought it was cool. Um, they took pictures of it, they took pictures of me, I don't know why. <laughs> and it really, it was a great platform for, for fun, for relaxation, and for conversation to occur. So after the day was all said and done, I was really satisfied with what, what this project had done, and what um, we had, uh, what message we had shared with Lincoln. Once again, what we wanted to do was educate people on the positive impact of an environmentally responsible design decision because it is our resp responsibility as designers, as architects, to be critical of the decisions that we make of this world because it is up to us to build the, build the future generation and with uh, dwindling energy supplies, we have to be exceptionally conscious about this. So once again, without 26 different people coming to help volunteer and to create this, this would not have been possible. So I'm really, really indebted to these people who, who thought I was crazy, but were willing to dedicate their time to help make this thing possible. So we estimated that we had put in 400 hours into this project. I really have no idea. But those 400 hours led to our eight hours um, in downtown Lincoln. And a lot of people thought, well, I think it needs to live longer. It deserves to be to have a permanent home. So what I did was I contacted 
uh, LinkedIn Community Props, and they provided the, uh, they were more than excited to uh, host uh, a spot for my uh, canopy to let to, to rest. So it provided a nice shaded environment for the gardeners to uh, take a break. <clears throat> so I assume this was kind of the, the end of parking day. I could just, I could leave my installation there and call it good. Well, to my surprise, a few days after I had, um, after parking day, I posted a few pictures of this project online um, onto my design portfolio. And within a few days after that, this was popping up on all kinds of design websites around the world, many of which I can't even read the language, but it was exciting nonetheless to see that people around the world were sharing this idea, this idea of recycling, of reinventing um, banal materials such as uh, just a soda bottle, and seeing that it really can inspire other people. So social media caught on to this as well. So Facebook, I was being tweeted I saw this, you know, picture all around. I also discovered what Pinterest was. <laughs> it's pretty cool. So this publicity was really incredible. I was really excited to be able to share this idea with the world, practically. Um, but this wasn't the end of it. I soon began to receive um, requests from publishers, from magazines, from books, from around the world asking if they can publish my, uh, my project in their magazine. And I said, absolutely. I think this idea needs to be shared with as many people as possible. So uh, a couple of my friends who were in Seoul, South Korea at the time, uh, picked up a copy of a, a magazine that they found there that featured my project. So that was really exciting to, to have that kind of international exposure. Also, it was featured in a French children's magazine. <laughs> which was also pretty cool. I couldn't read it, but um, <laughs> this was the this green, this is sustainability page on there. And it was, uh, it was really great to have that, uh, that publicity and knowing that I'm sharing my ideas with uh, kind of the future generation of children. So, in conclusion, it takes three things. It takes an idea. In addition to that, it takes passion. Now, don't, be, don't hide your passion. It's really important to share it with everyone. Be inspired. Inspire others. And everything will fall into place. So that answers the question, how does a small voice change the world? Thank you. <laughs>